Hey guys, well, I want to touch on a piece of gear I've been using for the past year, which is the XPED UL7. Um, as a comparative, here is the old trusty sort of Big Agnes insulated, uh, which was basically a lower end version, most people said, of an earlier XPED. And then just for size reference, what used to be considered a lightweight, this is a light core 1.5, this is in a short. Uh, it is just over one pound, and this is a self-inflating, but because it is a self-inflating and not fully inflatable, there is closed cell foam, so that takes up a good amount of room. But when you set them all side by side, um, you can see the advantages of not carrying the self-inflating foam um, as some of your insulation. Some of these uh, more inflatable kind, uh, they carry like a Prima Loft or um, some new sort of synthetic. Uh, there is a Sin Down Mat, or... Uh, I believe that's what it's called, their down mat um, in the XPED line. Um, you really have to be careful um, that you are not able to blow them up with your mouth. Uh, the moisture uh, coming out of your lungs uh, gets trapped in here. And I've actually witnessed that with the this guy here. Um, if you blow this up uh, and the condensation is getting there and you're using it over and over, um, when the temperatures drop at night, the condensation will start to pool. Uh, luckily, it'll be at the bottom, uh, but it definitely shows up as sort of water drops that you can see, at least through the thinner, lighter weight material. Um, and I was never able to see it through the big Agnes, but I want to kind of compare because there is a size and weight difference. Um, I will say I think the big Agnes is slightly warmer. Uh, this is not meant to be a winter, um, you know, pad at all. Again, I'll kind of put the links and stuff below. But the um, the other thing that to note is this is only a 20 inch uh, wide, uh, which fits most sleeping bags. If you guys are familiar with the Big Agnes sleeping bag line, uh, they don't usually put insulation in the bottom of the pad and or the sleeping bag, and the pad acts as that insulation. Most of the sleeves are designed for a uh, 20 inch uh, wide pad. So for Wild and Fire, I want something a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more room, since you know space and weight isn't really that big of a factor. Um, now some of the bigger ridiculous uh, size ones that are over comfortable, the Deluxe Dream and all those sort of you know, memory foam, those take up quite a bit of room. Um, so although the, the size wasn't a huge proponent, I knew I was going to use it outside of Wildland Fire Season and so I decided to go with this guy. I think the R value is just over 3. Um, when I used it this winter I could definitely tell it wasn't quite as warm as the, uh, the Big Agnes. I don't recall ever really being cold uh, using the Big Agnes just on top of the snow and uh, I had to go get a second pad uh, when I was testing this one through some of the winter trips. As I pull this out here, uh, last time I just sort of shoved it down inside, but the other thing that's taking up some room in this stuff sack is something they call the schnozzle. And so this is kind of be a two for one uh, review. This is a you know very lightweight sort of sill nylon. Uh, it could be used as a dry bag um, or at least a stuff sack to help keep clothes and stuff uh, during a rainstorm uh, dry if you wish. So for starters, the flat valves that XPED uses are a terrific design. You have an inflate valve and a deflate valve. And what's in there is just you know, a little piece of rubber so that as you blow in there, it won't allow, won't allow air to escape out. And so that kind of, you know, it's a whole lot easier to blow in. The size of this valve is much easier to blow. And so it's, it's just less exhausting uh, instead of the smaller valve that most people are familiar with. Plus not having to worry about the air escaping while you screw it down or however you do it. Um, I will say this, you know, this blows up easily. I've never counted how many breaths it took. Um, just make sure the deflate is pressed in there and away you go. What this nozzle will do is it's designed to work with the flat valve. But you just want to, you know, trap air in it so it's kind of like a big balloon and then just squeeze it out and usually I just bring it up to my chest make sure it's not twisted like it is right there and then just squeeze it and you'll see it starts to inflate we'll do another one just kind of fluff the bag up give it a couple rolls and then squeeze getting this on camera here. Put a little viewfinder on there so forgive me if I'm out of frame a little bit. So that's basically it. I mean just make sure that it's open. Kind of trap a little bit of air in it. Roll it down. And squeeze. You'll see we're already 
It's starting to take shape here. Let's get it back so you can see it. And these have only been kind of half full. You know, I don't really worry about getting, you know, total ones. Now, if you don't have your valve, you don't want to pinch it off. Sometimes it's easier to flip it upside down, just the way the schnozzle is aimed. I will tell you, this does seem to go a little bit quicker when I'm not doing it on camera. But I will keep doing it just so you can guys get a real, real time effort. And that's basically it. I can't quite get all the air in there. So, once you get to this point, hopefully you, you guys were all counting at home how many that took. Because no air is going to be escaping out of here, you don't have to worry. If you want it tighter, you can just add more breaths. And voila. back of my pickup here but uh, you see it's a nice bright color um, my main concern getting this was because it was made out of lighter and thinner weight materials that I was worried about popping but I have had no issues with this um, I had one day where I woke up where it was uh, deflated and I think it was just because I didn't get uh, the flat valve put back on correctly because I haven't had an issue since uh, all right that kind of gives you an idea I believe they're about the same thickness. The, this is two and a half on the Big Agnes. I believe this is two and a half or maybe even three on the UL. Uh, I should, should probably tell me right here. 2.8 inches. Boy, was I wrong. Anyway, uh, it is much more comfortable. As you can see, with the amount of extra room you have on the side, uh, when I have space in the tent or for like wild on fire, when I'm looking for something just a little more comfortable, the problem with, I've always had with these pads is it almost turns me into a side sleeper because I have very broad shoulders and my elbows fall off the side of the pad right here. So my arms end up being like this and it's a very uncomfortable. So I end up having to sleep on my side or my stomach, you know, kind of spooning this thing uh, just because of the nature of my shoulders. So with just having a few more inches with a 25 inch pad, now I would say equally as important as how quick it inflates compared to the standard valves that you guys are used to, it's just as important for me to be able to deflate the bag uh, super quick. And so usually while I'm laying on it, which allows the weight to kind of fall on it, once I roll over in the morning and decide that yes, I'm actually going to get up and break camp, um, I will just pull that one and it'll deflate, I would say, 80% within seconds. Um, I'm not, you know, having to roll it up and sit there and put my weight on it forever and ever, waiting for this thing to deflate. So what we'll do here is I'll just spin this around, kind of give you a, a quick example. I'm just going to uh, pull this in threes. got it folded in fourths and I'm just going to kind of press out the air it definitely works better if you're already laying on it in the morning but uh, this is still a whole lot quicker than a standard valve you can see there's still some air trapped in there up here real quick and get this air out. Alright, once you've got your roll, make sure your deflation valve is on there. Alright, the real test is going to be getting in the stuff sack. Remember this is put it in fourths, so it is at its sort of biggest but like I said, if you're in a hurry, you can just fold it thirds 
and it'll fit a whole lot better. And I do have the schnoz on the bottom here, so it gives you an idea. Even putting it in fourths, it fits in the stuff sack very easily. And the end here is just the schnozzle. So it is literally the size of an Nalgene can, uh, where you can't quite say that with the Big Agnes. The schnozzle is not necessary, uh, but maybe at the end of a long day, or if you're looking for a, a separate dry bag, um, I'd say water resistant bag uh, to keep some gear in. You know, it certainly folds up small enough that it fits in that stuff sack and you don't notice it. But for more money than like the Big Agnes, uh, you know, the Exped stuff is not cheap. Uh, people swear by some of the, the down stuff for winter camping, so down the road we may have to try that. But definitely at the 25 inch wide mark, it's exactly what I needed, and it doesn't take up any more room. In fact, it's smaller than all my other pads. So this is a beast with a, uh, a thumbs up on the Exped UL7 Sinmat. Thanks for watching, guys.